have to look at mining community and environment it's almost like a triangle okay we as communities we all live within an environment that environment makes our lives possible so access to clean water access to um, a healthy environment access to fertile soil access to grazing land but when mining comes to a rural community the relationship between the community and the environment uh, changes and the, econ the economy of the community changes very dramatically as a, as a result of the mining as well. You start seeing uh, people with exploration rigs arriving in many communities in Limpopo. They often arrive unannounced, um, you know, they just suddenly arrive in the middle of a village. Um, in some cases we have seen uh, in Limpopo where uh, a rigging drove just appeared in the village, not even in the surrounding area of the village. Um, in uh, uh, Bafukeng, we found a drilling rig right in the middle of a graveyard. Um, you know, and this unannounced, communities are not consulted. These things just arrive and they see suddenly there's this drilling rig. Um, it looks much the same as a water drilling rig um, and it basically goes down into the earth and it extracts a core of rock. And from the core of rock they can see where the layers of minerals are and whether those minerals would be economically viable for them to mine. But you know, this is a disruptive invasion, intrusion into the life of the community. And the community suddenly sees this and upon further investigation the community would discover that there's a big mining company that is interested in uh, coming to build a mine in, in that particular area. Once the community has given its consent for the mining to take place and in South Africa consent, consent is not even required. The community is simply, uh, the, the mining company is simply required to consult with the community. Um, the next stage that happens is the construction of the mine. Suddenly big roads are constructed, uh, almost uh, science fiction technology suddenly appears on the scene, big trucks and so on arrive, lots of dust and suddenly uh, people in the community find themselves endangered by uh, increased volumes of traffic and also by noise pollution and so on that takes place. You would have some blasting taking place, making way for the roads, removing rocks from the areas where the roads have to be, the construction of the buildings of the mine, the fencing off of the mine uh, and so on takes place. Um, in this construction phase, very often there are a few jobs available to the community. The community, community can become involved in the construction phase. But once the mining operation itself actually starts, the ramp up phase starts, they bring workers from outside. So workers who became unemployed in Valcom because mining is finished there, now migrate towards uh, Limpopo or wherever the new mine is being constructed. And these strange men arrive within the community and with the new mining legislation in South Africa the mining companies are no longer required to build housing for mine workers or to build accommodation for mine workers so these men arrive and they start renting uh, space within the community and you start seeing shacks going up everywhere and the community has some form of income from uh, these new shack, shack dwellers who arrive, who are very often single men. Uh, it is possible that the mining operation is taking place exactly where the grazing land of the community was or used to be or where the um, cultivation land of the community used to be and the community finds itself unable to continue with its self-sustaining agriculture that it had before. And very often it was the women who were involved in cultivation and so on and they suddenly find themselves unable to put food on the table for their families and so on. And with the single men arriving, uh, very often uh, commercial sex and sex trade begins to take place within the community as people lose the income and the forms of income that they had before. Um, and with this then comes the problems of sexually related diseases, sexually transmitted diseases and so on. Um, with the men there is a degree of alienation as well because they were herding cattle and so on and suddenly the grazing land for cattle is gone. Uh, people sell off their herds of cattle and that income that is derived from cattle and the milk and other associated products also disappears from uh, 
uh, from the scene. Uh, very often the law requires that a certain percentage of the labour force is women and because there aren't many women who are migrant labourers, labourers uh, the mind starts employing women from the community but not men. This, this might lead to increased domestic violence and violence against children in, 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 in households as well. Also, uh, what happens, uh, we have found in working with these communities is that uh, women uh, are often required to give sexual favours to the gatekeepers to the jobs uh, in, uh, in the mines themselves. Once the mine stabilises and becomes operational, um, it starts taking out the ore and so on, uh, a number of things might happen to the community. For example, if it's an open cast mine, they will drop the water table by putting a well field around the mine uh, to make sure that the conditions within the pits that they are operating in are dry. If it's an underground mine, they might um, cement the aquifers and so on that provide the community wells and boreholes with water. Um, and the whole process of dewatering takes place. Mines are also very thirsty. They use an incredible amount of water and they might actually um, have such an impact on the streams and rivers and, and fountains in the area that the community no longer has access to that water. And, uh, you know, the community now actually has to look towards government to put, put in the infrastructure for potable water and very often that does not happen and these areas become water scarce and conflicts between communities arise over access to water as a result of the impact of the mine on water in the area. Um, apart from that, the mine starts generating waste. For every uh, ounce of platinum or for every ounce of gold that is produced, several tons of waste material is produced and huge mountains of waste appear everywhere, rock waste uh, and tailings waste uh, in particular. Now very often uh, what happens is that the rock that is extracted gets crushed into a fine powder. This fine powder gets mixed with all kinds of toxic materials like cyanide and so on to extract the gold or to extract the platinum and uh, this then the waste material from that ends up on the tailings facilities that are there uh, right next to the community, often in very close, um, um, uh, close uh, uh, proximity uh, to the community itself. And if this waste material is not properly managed, the community suffers from the dust in the windy season that blows uh, from, from this waste and very often the dust contains very bad uh, toxic substances. And all these waste materials have an impact on the health of the community and you see people starting to cough very badly, um, you start, see, see, start, so you see people starting to have itchy eyes um, and red eyes and brown eyes in communities, the, the white part of the eye becomes brown, uh, people's uh, sight gets affected by, uh, gets affected by it. Uh, very often people start getting itchy skins and so on as well, eczema in the communities increase, asthma in the communities increase, uh, eventually uh, things like silicosis and TB and so on also increases within uh, these near mine communities as a result of the waste that is produced by uh, the mines themselves and things like cancer and so on could also increase. And very often because mines need a lot of water they are constructed close to wetlands, they are constructed close to streams and rivers and so on and the impact on the water of the community also uh, is affected. In the case of platinum mines, nitrites and nitrates in the water uh, increases, um, people start having diarrhea and uh, very often you start having uh, um, mothers um, spontaneously aborting their children, cattle aborting their calves and so on. Um, and also you start having infant deaths as a result of blue death, uh, nitrates and nitrates pre preventing the lungs from taking oxygen through to the fetus or taking, uh, uh, in the case of infants, taking um, um, oxygen to the various organs in the body and so on and children suffocating. Um, in the case of gold, for example, with arsenic and lead, mercury and so on, you have uh, increased levels um, of cerebral palsy in those communities and people start seeing things happening to their households and to their family members and so on that never used to happen before. 
and this really becomes a serious problem for communities. And when the mine starts going into a decline, that is when the mineral resource, uh, which is a finite resource, it's not a resource that lasts forever. Mining, uh, you know, mineral resources cannot be reproduced, they get finished. And when they get finished, uh, the mining company now starts looking towards selling the mine, which unfortunately South African law allows them to do. And they sell the mine to other companies which might not have the same financial and uh, expert resources that are required to close down the mine properly. And as the mine goes into decline, so the costs to the community actually increases because the mine no longer maintains its management of the waste facilities such as the tailings and so on. The mine no longer monitors the seepage of water into the streams in the surrounding areas. The mine no longer pumps water like it used to pump before and uh, suddenly the mine void or mine tunnels or even the excavations in open cast mines start filling up with water and this water then in interacts with the chemicals that are present in the open cast mine or in the tunnels below the mine and so on and it impacts on the groundwater and it begins to impact on the surface water and might actually destroy the surface and, and, and groundwater forever. And when the mines get abandoned, they become derelict, they become ownerless, um, they uh, become um, 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 a problem for the community because this used to be agricultural land. This used to be where, where people ploughed and where people's animals and so on grazed. And now it's just a toxic environment that nobody can use anymore. And you have maybe perhaps the only way for the community to survive and also the mine workers that have been retrenched is to become small scale survival miners. And they go into the mine site, they start stripping all the metal on the mine site, selling it to scrap metal dealers and so on. And when the metal is finished, maybe they start crushing the stone and start extracting what little bit of minerals are still left and give, gives them um, not even a self-sustaining economy but a, a very marginal economy with regard to what little minerals are left in, 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 uh, in that environment. Syndicates come in, syndicates demand that they pay rent to the syndicate for being on the mine site um, and the syndicates operate like the mafia. Uh, if you don't agree with them, they shoot you and they offer you protection uh, against other syndicates and so on and the levels of violence in the community uh, begins to to increase. Um, other issues that, that, that result from all of this, of course, is apart from the illness, you have violence on the mine site, even when the mine is fully operational, when workers strike, the, 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 the violence in the community, as we saw in Marikana, can increase. When there are protests, uh, the violence in the community can increase. Um, conflict arise between youth and, and, and older people, uh, conflicts between men and women, conflicts between children and adults and so on, all as a result of the disruption that is caused by the mines. Um, other things that, 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 that affect the community is increases in crime, increases in road fatalities, uh, increases in noise levels, increases in alcohol and substance abuse, uh, increase in sex work uh, and so on. You know, so all of these are things that the community did not expect. These are things that when the mines negotiated access to the land uh, in the communities, they were not told what would happen.